Hello everybody, and it's that time of year again. Happy Thanksgiving! Let's not Thanksgiving, but if you me, you probably in your room, underneath all your blankets, watching YouTube, or playing video games, while people are being loud downstairs, or upstairs. Well, welcome to How to Cook a Turkey. You might remember from the good old days, um, when I played, um, what is this, surgery squad stuff? You know, cutting open a toenail and hair surgery? Yeah, this is a turkey. Turkey! Oh, dear, really? Game of Trolls. It came to infections. How loud is this going to be? That's pretty loud. And welcome to Surgery Squad's Thanksgiving special, How to Cook a Turkey. I'm Dr. Jeff, and I will be guiding you through this delicious procedure. Hi, Dr. Today. Jeff. Nothing helps me relax more after a challenging day in the OR than cooking a fun OR. Meal. And I especially love doing it for family and friends at a big Thanksgiving dinner. The guest of honor at any oh, Thanksgiving Lord. dinner is the turkey. Today, we're going to show you how to prepare, cook, and carve your bird to help make this Thanksgiving and others to come delicious and memorable. Yeah. Just like we do for a surgery, we have to make sure we have all the tools Those necessary needed. for the procedure. Here's what I use. A roasting yes. pan with handles and a rack. Good for catching drippings as the bird bakes. Aluminum foil. A stick of butter softened at room temperature. Yes, yeah, softened salt, butter. Freshly ground black pepper and a meat thermometer. Before you cook your bird, you must make sure it is completely thawed in your refrigerator. Never leave a turkey out to thaw at room temperature because that might cause bacteria to form. Our patient okay. uh, subject today is a 24-pound turkey who is nicely thawed and ready to be the big star. Can you pat the turkey dry with some paper towels as I remove the gizzards and neck from the body cavity? Wait, wait. I guess you guys could use this recipe. Oh. 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 Great work. Let's wash the up noises. the noises. No matter what size bird you're working with, it's important to remember to keep it moist. If the bird is too dry, your guests might have to lie and tell you how delicious the turkey is when they really wish they were eating a TV dinner. Here's how yeah. I prepare a turkey to keep it moist. First, rub the softened stick of butter deeply onto the turkey skin, which will make it nice and brown as it bakes. This just sounds like an innuendo. Oh! Ew. Eh. Eh. No. Uh. Okay. Good. Next, sprinkle a generous amount of salt and pepper all over the bird for seasoning. Okay, generous amount of salt and pepper. This is generous. Very generous. Yes. Very generous. Aren't I just so generous? Great. The bird's all seasoned up, but not quite ready for the oven. Some folks traditionally fill the cavity with their stuffing. Don't mixture. address it I out. Don't, mainly because it introduces some problems. First, there's a chance that bacteria can find its way into the bird. Also, if you cook your bird to the perfect temperature, the stuffing will be too dry. It's best to bake the stuffing as a separate dish. Instead of stuffing, let's put in some aromatics, aromatics. such as rosemary or sage, a stick or two of cinnamon, a whole lemon, onion sliced in half. Or a handful of peeled garlic. Well, all of those. As the turkey cooks, so do these guys, and they'll release all kinds of flavors that will get right into the meat. Mmm, this guy's gonna taste good. One more thing before we put it in the oven. 
Take a large piece of aluminum foil and form a tent over the bird. It will keep any moisture from evaporating. We'll take it off during the last 45 minutes of cooking so the bird can brown up. Yeah. Ready for the Foil oven? tent. Okay, we've got ours preheated at 325 degrees. Generally, we'll cook a turkey at about 15 minutes per pound. Our turkey weighs 24 pounds. So multiply 15 by 24 to get 360. Then divide that by 60 to get 6 hours. All right, let's put the game on the TV and get ready to go. Yay! Wait, I'm not even going to be a part of this? There's about 45 minutes left. Time to remove our foiled tent and check the temperature. Mmm, smells nice. great. There's some nice drippings on the pan for gravy. Everything seems okay, but let's see where we are with the bird's temperature. Most turkeys come with this little pop-up device that's supposed to tell you when your bird is done. Thing is, it's not always accurate. That's where you need the meat thermometer. It's going mm. to give you the most accurate temperature. We're looking for a temperature of 161 degrees for the white meat and about 180 degrees for the dark. Stab it. So it's not quite ready yet. Let's leave the foil off so the turkey can get a nice layer of browning on it. I've got to get back to my guests. Now I'll just be in here washing the clock. Here he is, all nice and brown and ready for carving. First, cut here in this thin layer of skin that holds the side of the bird. Cut all the way down to your carving surface. Oh, Great. nice. Now just take your hands, washed of course, and press down on the thigh. Remove it when you hear the socket pop. Then just cut it off. Put that on a separate plate to carve up later. Now let's begin carving the breast. Ooh, I want to carve the breast. Nice and clean. Odd to have you over to carve our Christmas turkey, too. Let's cut a few more slices. These guests are getting hungry. Don't you do Christmas? I don't do Christmas turkey. We do Christmas ham. We do ham with monkey. Cousin Ben from Cooking wow, Chicken. Those are some delicious looking flops. Great job. Let's just go ahead and eat. See you after dinner. Our subject is well gone, but everyone else is. I didn't get to eat. No one to rest thoroughly to let their food digest. Guys might need to loosen their circumference. Your guests may also stray into the kitchen for leftovers. That's normal and encouraged. It means less you have to clean up. Yeah. You did a great job today. Give me sure all of the, the buns. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And we'll see you back in the OR working on one of our other surgeries here at surgerysquad.com. Yeah. I keep thinking about that. We might have a little bit of time to do that. Want to jump into that? Okay. We're going to do an oncology thing. A, I don't know what it's called. Squamish look away. Okay. Let's do this. Welcome to Surgery Squad's Virtual Mastectomy. I'm Dr. Susie, and I'll be helping you with this procedure today. A mastectomy is a surgical procedure that is used to remove one or both of the breasts in the event that an individual develops breast cancer. If you're not familiar with the condition, breast cancer uh, is a disease that originates uh, in the inner lining uh, of the breast milk duct. And with the exception of lung and colorectal cancers, it resulted in the most deaths of all cancers oh, in the United no. States in 2010. I'm going to have to do censoring. Scientists and researchers no, aren't, aren't they? sure what causes breast cancer. Hold on, guys. But they do know when started. This will provide okay. a with a given an IV. medication during the surgery. A tourniquet has already been tied around her upper arm. Can you find a suitable vein in the patient's hand? That one. Looks good to me. It is terrifying. Using a sterile alcohol wipe. Insert the needle and advance the angiocatheter into the vein. 
bosh. The small burst of blood in the angio catheter hub is what medical professionals refer to as a flashback. This lets us know that the angio catheter is correctly positioned in the patient's veins. Now I'll release the tourniquet. While placing a small amount of pressure over the vein to collapse it, remove the needle. This will reduce the amount of blood that may discharge out of the angio catheter when the needle is removed. Now that the needle has been removed, I'll dispose of it in a sharps container. <laughs> Lastly, we need to secure the IV with tape and test the lung. For those with a weak stomach or... The well, I had to get out of that because... Help Too much work with blurring. Put in his nose, okay. We need to get our patient's mouth open wide so they have room to work. To do that, we'll use a special mouth gag retractor that opens the mouth. Open the, the mouth, mouth. And locks into position. Open the mouth. Great job. That should give us plenty of room. <coughs> now we have to reach in. Oh, I have to do this pretty soon. Console forceps. We need to pull it to the side to expose the connective tissue. Can you do that for me? Nicely done. I grieved you. With the tonsil extended out, we need to place this electropottery device at the tonsil's base. The device used by removing the Yeah, it burns system, stuff. It cuts and burns. And allow the patient to heal faster. Now that the tonsil has been cauterized, we reach in with a tonsil guillotine clamp. The clamp severs the last of the connective tissue and allows us to remove the tonsil from the throat. Clamp the tonsil. Oh. We'll bring the electrocautery device back in here and apply it to any bleeding area. And I magically did the other side. Quickly, we won't need any stitches. Now we repeat our steps on the other side of the throat. Extend the other tonsil with the <gasps> Oh, I actually get to do it. Just like the other side, we'll cauterize this. I understand. And finally, we need to remove the tonsil. Guillotine, gab, clamp. And don't forget those bleeders. Yeah. I'll clean out the mouth with some irrigation and suction, and then we're all done. Suck it before he chokes. We'll send our patient to recovery for eight to ten hours, and more than likely, he'll be able to go home later. Okay. Okay. Well, that'll be it, guys. I might do another video. Just, just maybe. Maybe. I know I've probably done two today. <laughs> yeah. Well. Bye-bye.